Greetings everyone. You are welcome in, uh, to this uh, video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will talk about address calculation in 2D arrays in C++. A two-dimensional array in C++ is represented as A, M, N, where A is the name of the array, M is the number of rows of the array and N is the number of columns of the array. So, a 2D array is a collection of elements placed in M rows and N columns. In general, if we talk in general, a 2D array is represented as A, LB1 to UB1 and then LB2 to UB2 where LB1 is the lower bound of rows, UB1 is the upper bound of rows, LB2 is the lower bound of columns and UB2 is the upper bound of columns. So the total number of rows in 2D array is UB1 minus LB1 plus 1 and total number of columns in a 2D array is UB2 minus LB2 plus 1. And if we calculate the total number of elements in a 2D array, it is total number of elements in the rows into total number of elements in the columns. So it is UB1 minus LB1 plus 1 into UB2 minus LB2 plus 1. And if we talk about C++, LB1 and LB2, they are 0. Now, representation of 2D arrays. Computer memory is arranged as a row of memory cells. Thus, the, regular, uh, thus the rectangular structure of a 2D array must be simulated. Usually, we represent a 2D array using a rectangular structure. But in memory, it is not stored like this. It is stored in a different fashion. So, storage of 2D array in memory is done in contiguous memory locations. Just like a single D array, 1D array, elements of 2D array are also stored in contiguous memory locations. And this leads to two possible arrangements of elements of 2D array in memory. Row major and column major. In row major, the elements of the array are stored row wise. That is, first the elements of 0th row are stored, then the elements of 1st row are stored and so on. While in column major order, the elements of the array are stored column wise. First, the elements of 0th column are stored. Initially, we were storing elements of 0th row. But in column major, element of 0th column is stored first, then the elements of 1st column and so on. So, if we consider an array E34, where A is 3 is, A is the name of the array, 3 is the number of rows and 4 is the number of columns and see we have initialized it by some values also. So, if we look at this array, how it can be represented in memory. So, if it is row major order, so uh, in row major order, we will first store the row 0, then row 1 and then row 2. We can see here in row 0, the elements are 5, 13, 19 and 22. So, these elements are stored here like this and if we see the index number, you can see the index number of first element is 0, 0, 0 row, 0 column, then 0 row first column, 0 row second column and 0 row three column. So, row remains 0 and the number of columns are changing every time. Now, after storing row 0, we will store row 1. So, you can see this is the row 1. So, elements of this 33, 34, 39, 45 and 56 are stored and now the row number is 1 and column number 0. Then row number 1, column 1, row 1 and column 2 and row 1 and column 3. Next, row uh, 2 is stored and the elements are 60, 77, 83 and 92. So, this time row number 2, column 0, row number 2, column 1, row number 2, column 2 and row number 2, column 3. So, all the elements belong to row number 2 and different columns. So, this is how this entire array will be stored in memory. Now, we talk about the column major order storing the same array in column major or major order. So, you see how this will be stored. In column major order, uh, column 0 will be stored first, then column 1, then column 2 and then column 3. So, you can see here the elements of 0 column are 5, 34 and 60. So, you can see 5, 34 and 60 are stored here. And if you look at the index number, this is 0, 0. It means 0 row, 0 column, 1 row, 0 column, 2 row, 0 column. Now, the column number remains the same 0. And row number is changing, you can see. After storing column 0, we will store column 1. And the elements are 13, 39 and 77. See, 13, 39 and 77. 
Now they belong to row 0, column 1, row 1, column 1, row 2, column 1. And after this, column 2 is stored, which is 19, 45, 83. Then look here. And this is 0, row, column 2, column elements of uh, column 2 here. So 0, row, column 2, uh, 1, row, column 2, 2, row, column 2. Now after this, the last column, column 3 is stored. And column 3 is 22, 56, 92. So these are stored here and this is uh, 0 row column 3, 1 row column 3, 2 row column 3. So this is how all the columns wise uh, elements are stored. Column 0, column 1, column 2 and column 3. Now let us see how we can calculate the address of an element in a 2D array. As array elements are stored in contiguous memory locations, the address of any element of 2D array can be computed provided we know the base address of the array. The base address is the address where the first element of the array is stored. So you can see if we know the address of first element, we can calculate the address of any element which is uh, following it. If we know the address of this, we can calculate the address of this. In the similar fashion, if we know the address of this, we can calculate the address of any of these elements because these are, they are stored in contiguous memory locations, one after the other. So we consider an array, general array A with LB1, UB1 lower bound of row, upper bound of row and LB2, UB2 where LB2 is the lower bound of column and UB2 is the lower bound of uh, uh, upper bound of column and in C++ you already know that LB1 is 0 and LB2 is 0. So in row major order, if B is the base address or starting address of the array A and W is the element size of the array A, then the address of A, I, J at element in row major order is calculated as address of aij is equal to b which is the base address plus w the number of columns into i minus lb1 plus j minus lb2 where n is calculated as ub2 minus lb2 plus 1. Now let us take an example to make it more clear. So if a uh, question is an array a1020 is stored in the memory along the row that is in row major order with each of its elements occupying 4 bytes. Then calculate the address of 825 if the base address of the array is 2000. So we look at the memory representation. There are 10 rows and 20 columns. You can see here. These are 10 rows 0 to 9 and 20 columns 0 to 19. 20 columns are there. And then the base address is 2000. So the address of the very first element is 2000. Now we have to calculate the address of 825. It means row number 2 and column number 5. So row number 2, this is row 2 and this is column 5. You can see here. So if I try to, try to do it manually, then how will I do it? I know the base address of this element. So if it is stored row wise, it means the row 0 is stored first, then row 1 and then row 2. So all the columns of row 0, then all the columns of row 1 and these columns of row 2. This is if we can calculate the if we know the address of this, we can easily calculate because if it is 2000 and each element is 4 bytes, this will be 2004, this will be 2008 and this will be 2012 and so on. Otherwise also what we can do, uh, these are the two rows before this uh, element. So 2 into 20, all the columns of these rows plus these columns plus 5 columns uh, if we uh, add all these elements into we do the size of uh, uh, these elements which is 4 bytes plus if we add the 2000 we will get the address of A25. Let us see how we can calculate it using a formula. In formula we are also doing the same thing. So if A is an array uh, with m rows and n columns address of Aij is equal to base address plus i into n plus j into size of type. So here base address is 2000 i is uh, 2 j is 5, n is the number of columns which is 20, you can see this is i2, j5 and n20 and size is 4 bytes. This is how we are putting everything, 2000 plus 2 into 20 plus j is 5 plus 5 into 4. So we do the mathematical calculations, the address comes out to be 2180, 2180. This is the address of this element. Now let us take one more example. Now this is uh, something different, a slightly different example. In this there is an array A3020 which is stored in the memory along the row and each element is of 8 bytes. Now we have to calculate the location of A510 
if a45 is stored at 3000 see here the base address is not given to us rather we are given the location of the element a45 this is a45 and its location is 3000 using this we calculate the base address the address of very first element and then we use this base address to calculate the address of a510 so if we uh, use this formula address of aij is equal to base address plus i into n plus j into size of type where i is uh, 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 4 j is 5 and then n is 20 and size is 8 bytes and the location is 3000 so we are putting everything here in this formula so this is the uh, base address is the only thing which is unknown so using mathematical concept you can easily calculate the base address which is 2320 now after calculating the base address we will calculate the address of a510 so again you can see a510 in this if it is stored row wise so there are uh, uh, 5 rows 0 to 4 5 complete rows and then a few columns of this row so 5 complete rows means 5 into 20 complete rows and how many columns are these 0 to 9 which is 10 so 10 columns of last row so this is what we are doing 5 into 20 plus 10 and then into uh, the size of each element which is 8 bytes and we are adding this this we calculate this and add this to the base address so we get the address of this element a510 now let us talk about the column major order in column major order again if b is the base address and w is the element size of the array and we have to calculate the address of a j a i j th element so this will be now this time b plus w i minus l b1 plus m into m is the number of rows into j minus l b2 and m is calculated as u b1 minus l b1 plus 1 so let us take an example to understand this. Again, we are taking the same example which we did in row major order. We have an array A with 10 rows and 20 columns. And now this time it is stored along the column, column major order. Each element is occupying 4 bytes. And we have to calculate the address of A25. If the base address is 2000. So all the elements are stored column wise. So first column is, 0th column is stored first. And then the first column and then column number 2, then column number 3 and so on. So, if we have to calculate the address of A25, this is A25, so it means all the columns before it. So, there are 5 columns which are before it and each of these columns have 10 rows. So, 5 into 10 plus 2 columns of, 2 rows of this column, column number 5. So, all these elements into 4 and then which is added to 2000. So, if you look at the earlier example of row major order, you can see this is how we calculate it. This time these uh, cells are darkened, you can see and now in uh, column major order, it is stored like this. So, we have these rows, these cells are darkened, you can see. So, we put everything in the formula, uh, base address plus j into m plus i into size of type. So, if j is 5, j is 5 here, i is 2 here and m is the total number of rows which is 10 and the size is 4 bytes and the address base address is 2000 so if we put everything in the formula we will get 2208 2208 as the location of the element a25 so let us take one more example in which base address is not given to us so we have an array a5020 and it is stored in the memory along the column and all elements are of 8 bytes and we have to find the location of a510 this is a510 whose location we have to find and uh, we are given the location of A45. This is you can see 4 row and 5th column. So this is 3000. Using this again we will first calculate the base address which is the address of this element. And then we use this base address to calculate the address of this element. So we put everything in the formula. So address of AIJ is equal to base address plus J into M plus I into size of type. So where M is uh, 50 n is 20 and then i is 4 and j is 5 and the location is 3000 we put everything here in the formula so uh, only the base address is uh, not known so we cal can calculate easily the base address using uh, the mathematical concepts and it comes out to be 968 and now we calculate the address of a 510 
so the address of a 510 is calculated as m uh, is uh, 50 again n is 20 and size of uh, each element is 8 bytes and i is 5 and j is 10 now and if you put everything in the formula you can also see here ki we are calculating the address of a 510 it means all these columns before this elements and there are how many columns 10 columns and in each column there are 50 rows so 10 into 50 plus the remaining rows of this column last column which are what 5 so 10 into 50 plus 5 these are the total number of elements we multiply so this is what we have done here also into the size of each element plus the base address so this is the calculated address 5048 which is the location of this element so this is all for this session and uh, thank you and if you like this video kindly give thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much